everybody. It's me, Pastor Mike, and if you're watching this, it's probably a Tuesday, or whenever you found this video this week. Either way, it's probably election time, and either you're watching this before or after you've known the results of this year's election. Either way, you're probably feeling either exuberant joy or intense fear and anxiety. I know I preached a little bit th about this last Sunday, but I wanted to just take a moment and and address all the fear and anxiety that's going around the election right now. Now, this is not me telling you who to vote for, and this is definitely not me picking a political side. I know that for many of you, I am frustratingly apolitical, but it allows me to stay as close to the gospel as I possibly can. As much as I read, it's very clear Jesus did not have any earthly political alignment. He was aligned to his kingdom, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. One of the greatest things we can lose in all of this interaction with each other when it comes to political rhetoric is we can lose our kinship with one another in the kingdom of God. Meaning that we can forget that even those who we may not agree with, they're still children of God and many of them are also Christians. In doing so, we can lose our humanity. And at the same time, we can forget that Christians have been working together throughout thousands of years of disagreement. Our own church is a byproduct of that disagreement. And Shock prepared a very quick video for you to watch with a lesson between uh, the story of George Whitfield and John Wesley. I hope you enjoy. This is the story of an unlikely friendship of two ministers with vastly different theologies, John Wesley and George Whitfield. George Whitfield was an Anglican priest who was known for his itinerant preaching style, which meant that he went around and preached revivals all across the known world at the time. John Wesley was known for his methodical approach to ministry and discipleship, wanting to make sure that he was both pious with God and also instituting that piety with others. But the men had a difference. You see, George Whitfield was a Calvinist and John Wesley was an Arminian. Those are two very different theological approaches. But this didn't stop George Whitfield from learning from Wesley how to invoke his methodical way of conducting the church and doing so, George Whitfield taught John Wesley how to preach. With both of these men learning from each other and gleaning from each other what the other strengths were, they began very successful ministries. So much so that both men were credited with starting the Methodist movement all across England and the United States, which of course the Methodist movement is what our church benefits from today. And we can thank both of these men and their friendships for existing. As you can see, dear friends, George Whitfield and John Wesley knew that the church was more important than their petty differences. As a matter of fact, John Wesley was the one that preached at George Whitfield's funeral. He acknowledged their differences, but he celebrated what they had in common, and that was their Savior Christ, our Lord. I hope this is a reminder to you that it doesn't matter whether we agree on everything as long as we can agree on the certain things. Christ is our Savior. Christ is our Lord. And the kingdom of God one day being restored on this earth. My friends, I know this is a time of stress and anxiety for many of you. And I know that by the end of today and going into tomorrow or whenever the decision of our election is announced, someone is going to be unhappy. Some of you may be fearful. Some of you may continue to be anxious. This message is for you. Don't be. God has every one of us in his hands. He's had the Christian church in his hands from some of the most vile persecutions in the world all the way to some of the most triumphant moments. That should give us hope. God does not abandon or forsake us. And our mission doesn't change. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. What matters is who's in God's house. And that hasn't changed since creation. So whatever the results, have peace to know that God is on his throne and Christ is our redeemer and that the Holy Spirit continues to move in abundance here at First United Methodist Church. Let's have a prayer. Father God, whomever is victorious in this election, may you be acknowledged is victorious over all things. Father, we know that we should trust in you and forgive us when we don't. 
Forgive our petty fears at times. And Father, may we now have our faith restored, our hope restored in knowing that you are with us, that you never leave us or forsake us. Father, we pray over each and every candidate that is elected into their official position after this election. May you bless what it is that they do. May you speak to them and move through them. And if there is anything within their lives or within their souls that needs correcting, may your Holy Spirit just be abundant around them for them to see that. We pray for those elected leaders now in the name of Jesus and in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Father, restore peace to us. Restore the ability to see past our differences and to acknowledge our ministry with all of those around us. In doing so, we might be able to change the world as we know it here in Fairfield. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I hope this video has been if not helpful, at least a little entertaining. And I hope that you have hope. Not in me, and not in this building or institution, but hope.